Okay, I think we're gonna get started. Hello everyone, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you tonight and to kick off this evening's program. My name is John McInerney. I'm the interim director at the ICA. Tomorrow we will reopen the ICA with Milford Graves, a mind-body deal. This is the first time we've been open since March 13th. I wanna thank everyone on staff who's worked so hard to get us to this moment. Complete information on how to safely visit this exhibit is at icafila.org. I hope you will join us and experience this incredible installation. I now have the honor of introducing you to our incoming director, Zoe Ryan. We're so excited to have Zoe at the helm of the ICA. On behalf of the entire community, I wanna welcome Zoe to Penn and to Philadelphia. And without further ado, I will turn things over to Zoe. Hello and thank you, John. Um, as John said, my name is Zoe Ryan and as of November the 5th, I will be the new Daniel W. Dietrich, the second director of the ICA. Thank you so much for being with us here this evening. I am really excited to be joining the ICA, globally respected space and incubated for artistic thought and ideas and practice at this transformative moment in time. It is such a pleasure to be here virtually to introduce our fall season and tonight's panel discussion around the exhibition Milford Graves and Mind Body Deal, which is presented at the ICA with Ars Nova Workshop. We are delighted to reopen the ICA tomorrow morning with this groundbreaking exhibition. We thought this conversation would be a great way to gather us all together and to kick off this important show. I will hand over shortly to Anthony Elms, the ICA's Daniel and Rex Sunheim Chief Curator, so he can introduce the discussion and tonight's panelists. Before that, I'd like to thank several incredibly generous supporters who have made this long overdue retrospective of Milford Graves possible. Made major support for a mind body deal is provided to Ars Nova Workshop by the Pew Center for Arts and Heritage, with additional grants from the Andy Warhol Foundation for the Visual Arts and the Joseph Roberts Foundation. The exhibition at the ICA is also supported by Nancy and Leonard Amoroso, Cecile and Christopher Vanillo, Carol and John Finley, Amanda and Andrew Megabo, Norma and Larry Reichlin, and Caroline and Daniel Young. Our sincere thanks to you all. Thanks also to ICA's members and our donors who support our operations and other programming, and especially to our dedicated board of overseers who provide cornerstone support for the ICA. Thanks again to you all for being here. I very much look forward to further opportunities for us to know one another and for us to share ideas. And now, over to you, Anthony. Good evening. Uh, welcome, everybody. I have to admit I'm, I'm a little off off uh, kilter because it's the first time I've actually opened something that's closed uh, right now um, and that we're not all together. So a big virtual greetings and hug to everyone. Um, and thank you for joining us. So just to uh, let everyone know some facts, you can always uh, text questions for the panelists to Natalie or to the chat. And those will be collated and sort of forwarded to us to answer. And also there is a screen of closed captioning. So if you uh, need text to move along and follow us, uh, feel free to sort of uh, pin on the um, closed caption text. I'll also note that there is a, a highlight reel of sort of welcoming you into sites and sort of glimpses of the exhibition. And if you would like to see that larger, if you just double tick double click on the image, um, you can sort of expand it. Now with that, I will also um, welcome the other two people who are joining me tonight. One is the co-conspirator, Mark Chrisman, who's the artistic director and founder of Ars Nova Workshop, a fantastic presenter of experimental music and jazz here in Philadelphia for 20 years. And um, with us both tonight is another sort of wonderful sort of person about town, conversationalists that have had pleasure to know for a long time, like Bradford, who's an independent writer, curator, educator, also a sort of founder of Points of Entry, and in addition, an Ars Nova board member to help us keep some thoughts along about Milford. 
And I guess without further ado, I'll maybe just dive right in and sort of put a, think through, you know, here we are, like we've been thinking through health almost daily since March uh, around the country. And we've been thinking about, you know, what justice and what, you know, self-reliance and what self uh, organization can mean. And so as frustrating as things have been in this and as uh, sort of complicated and sometimes dour as things can seem, I have to admit if I, if I need to have a place to look, I can't think of a better place to look than Milford Graves to think through some of the issues of how it is one can live a life both for themselves and for their community. And um, so it's been a pleasure to work on the project. And with that, I'll sort of ask Mark to just dive right in and tell us why Milford, why Ars Nova doing an exhibition? Why start this process? Um, sure, sure. I do want to point out that you called uh, Blake a, a person about town, uh, which I thought was, was very interesting. He, he, he very much is, uh, even though he has two wonderful uh, little, little kids now uh, and less of a person uh, uh, around town. <laughs> Uh, I, I do want to do a little bit of that banking uh, before I move on and, 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 and answer that question. Uh, um, you know, I, I want to thank Milford and, and, his, and his wife, Lois, uh, for, for accepting me into their lives and, and uh, being open to, to, to this exhibition and being open to, um, uh, you know, us kind of figuring this all out together. Uh, his wife Lois uh, uh, was born in Philadelphia and lived here for 10 years, by the way. Lots of, you know, interesting Philadelphia uh, um, uh, c connections to, to explore. Uh, I, you know, I want to thank the ICA. I mean, it's just been amazing to, the ICA and Ars Nova have, have had, uh, you know, an exciting um, uh, relate, relationship over the years, whether it was, you know, working a little bit uh, with you on the Sun Ra show or uh, the Freedom Principle show. Uh, this is uh, above and beyond those those experiences for us, uh, and you know we couldn't have done it, uh, to say the very least, uh, with without um, you and, and 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 your team of amazing people. Um, I, and I do want to thank um, uh, Celeste Nucci uh, uh, on Ars Nova staff, the, the director of development, uh, and Jake McGinsky, uh, who is really. Uh, almost a one-man inner circle uh, of Milford. He did the, the fantastic acclaimed uh, Milford Graves Full Mantis um, uh, documentary uh, and has been a big part of, of and, and uh, very instrumental uh, in, in making this all a, a reality. Um, so thanks to them. Thanks for letting me share that. Uh, I, you know, I, Ars Nova, of course, is, uh, as you said, we've been around for 20 years. We've been bringing the, 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 the great uh, jazz and, and uh, improvisers to Philadelphia, um, putting them on stages uh, all throughout the city and, and um, you know, trying to support their work and, and be part of, of its uh, evolution. Um, but, you know, it, it and the foundational focus of the organization has been the free jazz movement, uh, which uh, in the very large part, Milford has helped define. So uh, probably within a matter of 10 years or so of, of continually presenting 40, 50 concerts a year all throughout the city uh, and trying to be as creative as possible with it, it was very clear that, that presenting these artists on stage uh, as important as it is, is, is often uh, limiting. Uh, that that uh, artists um, uh, like Milford Graves uh, have a lot more to offer than the, than the 65 minutes or 72 minutes that they, that they perform and improvise uh, with others or, or by themselves, uh, often for our entertainment. Uh, so Milford provided a really rich life uh, of exploration and um, uh, searching and scholarship and understanding and, uh, and research that, that uh, uh, afforded an, just an amazing opportunity uh, to, to see how we could uh, present it uh, well beyond uh, the, 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 the live concert in environment. Uh, so I guess in part, that's, that's why Milford. 
and maybe Blake, let's, let's bring you in. Like, let's think about like, how would you think about Milford as a person, Milford as a gener as a, because of course we're thinking he starts as a musician, but, and as loud as the exhibition is, I wouldn't say that a musician is like the center of the exhibition. So, you know, maybe you could help think about Milford as a right. cosmos. <laughs> A cosmos, that's a, an interesting way to look at his practice. Um, the practice itself just expands out. So I think the most outwardly will, notable um, part of his practice is the recordings that he's been on, the concerts going back to the mid-60s, um, that, that I think in our conversations we've noted that he's not necessarily incredibly well documented, but he played on Albert Ayer's Love Cry, or the New York Art Quartet, um, the, the percussion duets with Andrew Cyril um, and, and Rashid Ali. So all of those collaborations he's been a part of have been you know, really seminal in terms of, of free jazz and so on. Um, but I think the, the, his, his sort of curiosity and, and we're sort of using some past tense just in describing what's been there, but Milford is very much engaged with these things like today, tomorrow and beyond. Um, so I think where he starts with explorations in music, um, you know, leads him as a, as a cultural producer to, to try and find new ways to be autonomous. And so, um, you know, starting, starting his own record label and starting his own institutes. You know, Mark, Mark, we were joking about it this afternoon, but I wonder you know, how many like institutes of his own has he founded? And so um, I, I think it's like in the music, he's a virtuoso musician, but just as somebody who's creative practice overspills these kinds of boundaries you know, they, they, there's not institutions that necessarily can fully capture, you know, he's a musician, he's a martial artist. Um, he is, and like, I don't know what you call him as a scientist. He's a, a diagnostician in terms of what he's been doing. And the, he's a researcher, you know, so this has led him all of these really interesting and amazing places. Um, so, you know, for me, and then, and then certainly the, you know, the visceral aspect of like having seen him, the first time I saw him in concert was maybe 1998. And th that idea of sort of this curiosity taking him over the boundaries that we normally see, well, you know, it was like a jazz performance and a Yara performance and they spilled off the stage at Irving Plaza. And it was like, you know, this, this sort of amazing encounter that feels like it's so much a characteristic of this larger body of practice. Okay, so now that we've dived in, maybe let's, uh, let's try to footnote uh, what, what Milford is for, for those who maybe are less familiar. So Milford Graves is one of the most important drummers in free jazz. So he, he begins in the early 60s and he's unabashedly one of the foremost, five most influential drummers uh, in jazz from 1960 forwards. But aside from that, and the reason why he's maybe at the ICA, maybe at the core of one of Ars Nova's first, you know, real full-fledged exhibitions, um, is that that's not the end of it. Like, as much as he's a full-fledged and respected drummer in the 60s he then studies um and becomes like a lab technician for a vet and then sort of uses his own studies to develop research into heart heart rhythms uh, biology thinking through vibrations thinking through like what it is to heal us with heart not just like through studying of the heart but through herbs through acupuncture and then simultaneously in the early 70s, it's not just that he's a martial arts enthusiast, but he invents his own form of martial arts and then welcomes people in as a teacher and as a sort of 
constant person bringing pe people into his home, into his dojo, into a you know, private space, and sort of offering them classes, sometimes for free, sometimes for a fee, but like always with the idea that the community is important. At the same time, he's starting community gardening, tr training uh, people of any age around him into like how to grow, what to grow, what to eat, what you can not eat, and then tending his own garden, which sort of expands on. So like this is someone who, and a lot of the objects that have been panned and scanned through the sort of reels of the exhibition that have been going forward have been scenes of his home and scenes that sadly we couldn't bring out from Jamaica, Queens, but that we could actually sort of document somehow because like he's literally been building, constructing his own space by his own methods, by his own focus, by his own studies for decades. Um, and as someone who's had a several year relationship with Milford now, uh, Mark, I mean, I wonder if you could sort of talk about like that sphere, like what, what it is to be, what it is to try to bring these things together and what happens there. What? Yeah, well, I, I think you, you know, you're, you're, you're really nailing it there. I think a lot of people are gonna come into, into this uh, exhibition um, understanding his work as a, as a so-called jazz uh, musician and his accomplishments um, and collaborations from the New York Art Quartet to um, John Zorn and, and Jason Moran. Uh, I mean, he's even been in, you know, Nike commercials and Matthew Barney uh, films. Uh, you know, there, there, there's a, a number of different doorways in, into, his, into, into his world. Um, and you know that that world goes well beyond, uh, uh, and and this is what folks are going to experience when they when they when they come and see the show in person. Um, you know, auditory pleasure and, and entertainment. Although I, I find him to be the one of the most you know Milford tunes himself to the audience before performing, uh, so uh, uh, it's hard not to to. To, to be uh, amazed and transformed by by a, a Milford Graves uh, experience and, and performance, but you know he, he's engaged in concerns of as we've talked talked about cosmology and physics and chemistry and biology and medicine. Um, you know, it's his whole life is this kind of multidisciplinary uh, project that that straddles arts and and, and sciences. Uh, anyway, you asked me a question, and it was about you know the experience of, of being around him and 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 his um, uh, in his presence uh, in, in his house uh, and participating um, you know in in his cre creative life. Uh, you know, it's it's quite um, it's quite amazing. I, you know, I was I was given a real opportunity to to, to spend a lot of time uh, around him this summer, and, and of course um, uh, before that. Ars Nova actually brought him to Philadelphia about six years ago and presented him uh, at um, uh, Bartram's Garden in, in the oldest uh, barn in Philadelphia County uh, in order to draw connections between the, the, the birthplace of American botany and, and his life of research and practice and, and, and interests. Um, but, but um, yeah, I mean, uh, j j I, I know I'm not really answering the question, but uh, you know, he, he, he a lot of people gravitate towards towards Milford, um, and and there there's one uh, you know in, in particular um, uh, very dedicated uh, um, uh, student basically um, Peyton who who comes uh, over to the house on almost a daily basis and and has helped Milford uh, for the past. Uh, nine months or almost a year, uh, executing some of the, the 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 sculptures that we that you'll see in the in the show uh, and, and various other things. Um, Peyton and another young man, uh, both very recent graduates, uh, um, saw the the, the documentary um, uh, in New York and befriended Milford, uh, and after that uh, struck up, you know. Uh, a much deeper uh, relationship with 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 Milford, uh, and continue to be really p productive, amazing contributors to to his life and his artistic output. 
um, Milford had the idea uh, of building a, uh, a greenhouse in, in his backyard. Uh, who knows, probably for months or, or years even. Uh, and and Milford, Milford can't, can't, uh, can't move so much. Um, uh, so he was, he was not really capable of, uh, of executing this, this uh, construction project, essentially. Uh, but he, he knew how to tell uh, two young men uh, how to, 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 to construct this, um, this, this uh, greenhouse in, his, in the image in his mind. Uh, and without, um, w without seeing how they were working, uh, he just directed them, directed them how to build this thing, uh, what, what, what elements to use, uh, and piece by piece, uh, these two um, young, young men constructed an amazing, uh, very Milford uh, greenhouse that, that functions very well uh, today. Um, so it, you know, it's a, it, and and I'm not even sure if Milford has even seen the 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 the, uh, the greenhouse that was built, um, however many eight eight months ago, seven months ago, um, but it is c clearly constructed in his imagination and 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 executed uh, thanks thanks to it and his ability to um, uh, to, to teach. Milford taught at uh, Bennington College for for forty years. Uh, almost for 40 years, uh, uh, as a side note here. I hope Thanks. that was a sufficient answer. Can I, ask, can I ask Mark a question sort of related to your experience spending all the time with him? Of course. Um, uh, did, did, did you get hooked up to the EKG machine? No. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm sure that that opportunity could have presented itself. But honestly, I was a little intimidated and 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 scared. I was I was afraid of of I'm I'm I might be a little afraid of doctors and and what they can find. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna interrupt here for um <laughs> for, for folks just to to say like so when you come to the exhibition, we have tried to because Milford is not someone someone Milford is someone who has said no more than he said yes, and those no's have been tactical nose, not just, you know, reactive nose. Because he does believe like things worth doing and things worth investigating, things worth controlling. So when you go to Milford's house, Milford's house, but then all, for all the nose he does, Milford has welcomed people into his basement, into what was a lab and a performance space and into a dojo on his property which has been a, um, which you're seeing him dancing in right now, uh, doing his martial arts, where he taught martial arts weekly from 1971 uh, into the 90s. And so Milford, as much as he might have said no to public stages and to public spaces, never said no to people and never said no to bringing folks in. So when you come to the show, the show is based largely on some key objects that Milford has made on top of someone who built a real, bought a reel to reel in the early 70s to record his music and to record his science investigations. And then followed that with a tape recorder to record his music and further investigations and also offer lectures. And then in the 80s, bought a video recorder, recorded his own videos, recorded his practices recorded everyone who ever played in his house with him. Every rehearsal, every, okay, not every, but like many dozens of Yara um, instructional classes. As we're watching here, recorded hours of himself practicing and trying to perfect um, different techniques on tabla. And so this is someone who's been aware of thinking through themselves and thinking through how they document themselves and thinking through how that becomes evidence of action for themselves, but also for others. Um, and so when Mark says he's um, scared of being hooked up to the EKG, like Milford is someone that, to say he's interested in hurt rhythms. So in the early 70s, he's interested in the hurt rhythms. He buys a record. The record is just of normal and abnormal hurt rhythms. 
And based on listening to that, he thinks, this probably tells me, A, something about rhythms as a drummer, but also something as rhythms and health as an individual. So he buys stethoscopes. He buys an electric stethoscope. Then he follows that with EKG machines. Then he follows that with computers and buying scientific equipment, particularly this thing, LabVIEW. And he continues to try to cure himself and cure others of his friends and like record them and offer them recordings that he does. I wouldn't say experiments, but I would say like generous attempts to sort of place himself in those around him in a sort of further sense of knowledge. Um, is that accurate? Yeah, that's very accurate. I, you know, I think that that it is, um, to, you know, to get more specific, uh, um, you know, Milford embraces a lab view of scientific software, a, a program uh, after he gets a Guggenheim in, in the late 90s uh, and, and begins to use it for his own for his own research, research that that um, uh, contributes to to co authorship of a journal article uh, to um, uh, being understood as, uh, 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 you know, securing some patents and, and even being understood as the, the, the discoverer of, of the micro rhythms of the heart. Uh, his, his use of LabVIEW, it, 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 um, it, it helped to measure, you know, electrical, electrical activity in the heart and, and, and transform it into frequency, convert that into melody. You're going to hear a lot of these uh, sonifications uh, in, in the exhibitions. They're, they're quite uh, unique to, to, say the, to, to say the least and very beautiful. Um, you know, I, th I think that, that um, you know, and I can maybe push this back on you guys, but, but it, it, it really is the, the artists, the artists who ought to accelerate the healing process. You know, I do wonder about the limitations that we put on artists to put them on the wall, ha hang up their thing, to put them on stage and let them, let, let them uh, uh, you know, uh, make sound for us, uh, to, to talk about them as people who go into the studio and record or, or compose something or into the, uh, into, into the other studio and, 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 and paint a pretty, pretty picture. Um, you know, I, I know that it goes beyond that, their artistic practice, of course, but you wonder about what they're accomplishing with that, you know, in Milford's case, you know, we like to call it the, the, the jazz mind and, and think about why improvisation matters so much. Um, you know, why, why improvisation matters so much to, 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 uh, frontline firefighters and first responders, or um, you know, in in this era, uh, emergency room uh, technicians and, and and that sort of thing. Um, you know, I, I I do wonder what how 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 uh, we have constructed. You know, even as presenters of art ourselves, how we've constructed. Um, uh, made it difficult for artists to to present their whole selves. Um, I'm just putting it out there. I'm going to, I'm going to, um, you know, on one level, we've been underselling Milford here. I mean, like this is someone that it's not that just that he's dabbled in science. Like he did uh, help and he is a credited author on a, on a paper of discovering variable heart rhythm and which is something that has helped cardiology think about how it can anticipate illness and how it can look like not looking at the pulse, not looking at how the heart valves, but, but looking at like the actual rhythms and the actual sub rhythms of the heart as signs of illness and as signs of a weakness and things that can be addressed and things that can be, you know, put forward. So he's, um, in his untrainedness, he has actually like pushed forward things that, um, you know, in, association with like a group of scientists that like have actually changed how people are looking at the heart people how people are looking at the heart not as a metronome but as a responsive muscle that needs to actually have flexibility and um i did notice far back like there was a question of someone asking if milford would be joining and sad the sad fact is milford's health is up and down these days because he does have a heart ailment uh, for someone that's studied the heart since 1970 
um, it's a bit of schadenfreude that he's now uh, afflicted with a heart condition that he's trying to monitor himself. So his, he has been a full fledged member of putting the exhibition together, but his ability to engage in programming is um, a, we will see, you know, step-by-step -step matter. Perhaps in the future, not, ready, not written out, but um, not a given. But because we have Blake here, and Blake had several years at the Barnes, and if I think about Philadelphia, I think you've got an eclectic mind, an eclectic mind that is ordering their house to their own mind and to their own sense of education and own sense of perpetuating education. And you worked in a museum which is dedicated to perpetuating one man's mind and one man's idea of perpetuating education through his objects. If you can, if you can think of links here, or if you can think of like interesting nodes of how to think through Milford's house is not Barnes's house. It's not objects, paintings, sculptures, pottery, but it is like self-made constructions, self-made murals, science lab, acupuncture lab. If you can think through like this, what it is to be a you know, what it is to be a conglomeration as opposed to a, a single focus. Well, I, th I think that's a, I hadn't thought about that until now, but it, it's an absolutely resonant kind of connection. Um, so, you know, Albert Barnes was someone who had really had this career as a successful businessman and then went wholesale into becoming an expert in this other field, but his expertise wasn't necessarily uh, bound by tradition. Um, and I, I see some real parallels there with Milford and, and also something connecting to what Mark was saying where, um, you know, Milford is, you know, he was a college teacher who had a high school degree and Milford has this knowledge and incredible ability to contribute. You know, he was a Guggenheim fellow, fellow winner, not for his drumming, but for his scientific research. And, and it sort of, um, implicates the way we think about a credential versus a kind of uh, expertise. Like we don't, we don't have a great, even, even the, the artworks he makes as such, um, the, the idea of him as a self-taught artist, we don't have a great vocabulary to think through those things, you know, and then, then similar to Barnes, he's kind of created this universe, you know, and he's the, the expertise that he's generated in this seemingly disparate field with Barnes thinking about art in an unconventional way, which isn't like we, we frame unconventional as like a weirdness, but it's really a, a kind of, you know, we, we are stuck in convention. So Milford, what he did with the jazz pulse and drumming and then Milford as this person who really delved deep and you know went where his curiosity took him not necessarily where his credential took him um so so there's definitely something there around a, a similar kind of spirit um between him and barnes and and that uh you know a courage around creating their own universes where there's a sort of like resistance because they are unconventional in that way um, it's, it's definitely a, a, an interesting kind of um, affinity in that. And, you know, I think Milford would also just see, you know, really see the boundaries or, or the, the sort of categories we use to create those boundaries in a similarly um, permeable way, you know? So I, I don't, I don't think, it just just in the reading that I've done with Milford, where you know he he's he's just got a counterintuitive way of thinking about what things go together. Even going back to just his martial arts, where he could learn they they wouldn't teach because he wasn't Chinese. They wouldn't teach him the mantis style. And he said, "Well, I'm going to cut out the middleman and I'm going to learn from the mantis, the insect, and develop my own style based on this sort of intuitive response to that." That, that he doesn't feel the need to stay in his lane in terms of 
credential on a conventional mode of learning his practice and developing his expertise. Uh, you know, I think there is definitely a, a resonance there with those kinds of figures. Yeah, so, whew. trying to think where to go next. I mean, it's funny, it's like I'm trying to think, we've barely touched on the show. We've right. barely touched on what's gonna be in the show. I mean, we've barely touched on the fact that this is someone who's been making and building their own history and then based on like a single question in 2017 starts suddenly an entire career of building sculptures mm. that are meant to be instructional that does, you know, visual works, including drawings that are made on Monday that are on view in the show, which I'm used to working last minute. And this is a whole nother cosmology of working last minute. This is a whole nother world of, um, oh, I'm going to make th something on Monday. It's just going to set, that's going to set things right. That's going to, you know, set things in motion. Um, and so let's think about like, what is it to be a student of, of Milford? What is it to listen to him? What is it to like think with him? And Mark, you've spent the most time, you've, you, you've spent the most intimate time with him uh, of the three of us. So like, what is it to, what is it to listen to Milford? Well, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a, a, a life affirming uh, moment, you know, you, you, your, your relationship to time just kind of w washes away. Um, you're in, in the presence of this, of this mind who is um, still, you know, that's, that's firing on all cylinders and, and um, c compressing so, uh, so much information simultaneously. Uh, and and pr presenting it to you and in, in uh, as as uh, the, as a professor as the professor would, uh, but also in in creating. I'm going to interject just enough to say that people close to pr Milford Graves do call him the professor. That's his mm -hmm. colloquial uh, name. Yeah. Okay. Continue. That's true. But, you know, but you know, you, it's not just experiencing Milford. It's it's experiencing uh, this this. Uh, uh, this, this, the vibrations, this life world, this, this environment that is, that that is all that reflects an entire life of, uh, of um, study and curiosity. You know, you're, you you en enter this amazing property, and and the, he lives in the house that his grandmother uh, passed down for, for, uh, uh, to to him. Uh, and he's transformed it into into this beautiful environment, his global garden, uh, his, his dojo. Uh, there's just an extraordinary history there that you feel you know you have uh, amazing access to, like a like a uh, like something out of Harry Potter or something. I mean, I only just watched Harry Potter last winter, so I you know I know all this. Um, uh, you know, but you know he's he is he's still he's still teaching. Uh, and if you're, um, if, if at, at, on any given Sunday, uh, w you know, w w which was my summer, uh, there was, uh, there were opportunities to, to, um, uh, to, to get a free education, to, to be honest, to, to be open, to, to have your, your, you know, um, life changed and, and to be part of, uh, of, uh, his ideas and, and, and to, uh, I mean, for me, it was about supporting them uh, and, and figuring out ways to, uh, you know, bring them, literally bring them to Philadelphia and, and, and present them. Uh, you know, he was an active, um, this, this exhibition is the result of many, many conversations uh, and many activities and many visits and uh, and a, 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 a process so that people would consider, um, um, uh, you know, slow, I, I suppose. Uh, but it was, you know, it was the only way to, it was the only way to go about it. Well, if, I'm, if I might be allowed a tangent, mm. and I guess I'm in charge right now, so I can be allowed a tangent. Um, so you like, for me, it's been interesting that, you know, Milford is a percussionist. He comes from the, 
his early time from teenage years is going coming up through Latin jazz bands and not, but not through Latin jazz bands, like big bands, but Latin dance bands. Like he's playing timbales in Latin dance bands. And if you think about a musician, if you think about music, you know, the, the drummer in, I guess, you know, bebop, swing, all these other things is a supporter for the melody and the melody is everything. But in, you know, Latin music, the melody isn't everything. Movement is everything. You know, like there's samba, there's different, there's rumba, there's different dance, there's dance rhythms and you learn the dance steps and you go to the dance steps and that's where he comes up through. And so he's thinking through rhythm, not as a support of melody, but he's thinking, but he's thinking through melody as like, and rhythm is like, does it connect to people or does it not connect to people? And Milford is someone who loves to explain himself. And if anybody is on this Zoom that has been to a Milford concert, that means you've also probably been to a Milford lecture because they are one and the same. He will, the encore would often be a lecture, maybe a third or the same length as the concert. Or maybe it would start with the lecture before you got the music. You never really quite knew. And I just want to, I want to read one of his transcripts because I think one of his transcripts is worth noting. We've been transcribing a lot of his personal tapes through this talk, through this uh, exhibition to think through uh, a publication of a catalog, but to also think like, you know, Milford is someone who's been, it's not just that he's been a teacher. It's not just that he's led things in science and in you know, herbology and in music and in martial arts. It's that sometimes when you see him play, he'll be counting the beats that he's playing, which is really rare for a drummer. Like you'll, you'll see him playing, he'll be like, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, four, five, six, one, two, five, five. and he's going through like the, you know, like the, the rhythmic changes of what, that, what these polyrhythms are that he's playing. Like he's a, he's a consummate thinker of what these things do. And so there's a quote that keeps sticking with me a lot. Um, and I think it's worth thinking before maybe we get to, to questions. But, and this is from an, an undated uh, concert tape that's probably from mid seventies, given you know, where he was playing and what he was playing. And he said at the end of this concert, Anyway, something happened to jazz. It's not even a thing about whether it was good or bad. I don't want to get into that. Jazz got very, jazz isolated itself from the tradition of music insofar as what this is about. I still can't agree with so-called abstract or avant-garde concepts that you get so abstract that you're out of it. You don't relate to nothing. And when you're coming out to deal with people, I mean, the people, well, we have sessions. There are sessions that are for musicians, and that's some heavy stuff. And if you're not initiated, forget it. Maybe some of the stuff is for initiates, you know. And I always try to drop into that every once in a while. But I'm from one of those schools that believes if you come out and you have an audience of people coming to check you out, they want something. You should know how to deal with that. You know there's such a thing as the people's music. There's musicians' music. And there's music where you lock yourself in the closet and say, I'm playing for me. And you get in a mirror and you put in a big mirror and you look at yourself and say, yeah, yeah, I'm it. We all do that. You comb your hair, right? You look at your face and you say, uh-huh, I'm that. See? But then you're talking to myself. And I talk to myself a whole lot. But when you get with musicians, and that's another thing. And when you come out for the people, you've got to understand that some of the people don't understand that. And you've got to be with the people. I'm not in the dig me, suffer if you don't understand. Because everyone has a part to play. And you've got to make sure that you're giving everyone their part to play. So before I open it up, sorry to drop that on you, but either two of you got anything to say before I then open this up to questions? I think... There, there is a, a sort of stream of generosity with Milford that I think is 
on some level coming out of where he was at very least adjacent to the black arts movement and the idea of a purposeful expression. Um, but then also Milford in his practice has always been a convener. Um, you know, and so many of the works one way or another are about these kinds of collaborations. And I think, you know, to your point about the Milford concert experience, some part of that is about, um, you know, maybe, maybe he sees himself as a collaborator with the audience. Um, when, he, when he comes out of that closet that he described of performing for himself and the things that he might emphasize in performing for himself versus you know, looking at how to make this authentic connection. And, and I think, you know, that, that idea of improvisation for him as a broad philosophy, you know, the, the martial art part, Yara means to be nimble, a, a Yoruba word where then it's like his playing isn't prescribed as such. It's, it's this, you know, when he gets to the audience and they want something, it becomes this collaboration, you know, of, of him, uh, uh, them arriving with desire and demand and him in his role working to satisfy that, you know, and working to, to create sort of uh, outcomes that are generated for everybody involved. Um, you know, and I think that's, that's, that's something, a, a way perhaps to understand his work and his practice. Yeah, I think we, I mean, I'll just close it out a little bit with, with this. And we often talk about the, the, the healing power of music, but I, but I really think that, that we rarely, to be frank, to, that we rarely go beyond, you know, simple and, and superficial conversations about it. Um, and, and to maybe step back a little bit and to, and to you know, maybe tie this up in a, in a bow before we, we, we look at some of these questions. Uh, you know, I want to I want to quote Milford again, and and that is, you know, that he his work. It it it, it he defines it as biological music, you know, a uh, synthesis of the physical and the mental, uh, and as he says, uh, a mind body deal. Okay, with that, I'm gonna I'm gonna pose this question to Mark. We have one question that says, can you talk more about the process of selection for what's included in the exhibition and how it's organized? If that's thematically, chronologically, and how long the show has been in the making? Uh, the, the show has been in the making for probably uh, five or six years. Uh, we, Ars Nova was working on a completely different, uh, 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 but not unlike uh, project in, in 2014. Uh, and that was the same year that that we had an amazing experience with Milford, uh, bringing him him here to to perform solo at, at Bartram's Garden. Uh, so it started then, and and you know these things take time and and many conversations and many many conversations and uh, hopefully some in, in investments from from funders and that sort of thing. Uh, the, the the show itself, um, uh, it it it. It was actually going to be presented in, in two or three or four other locations before uh, the, the ICA uh, presented the, this extraordinary opportunity. So it, it's been an amazing journey. Um, the, the last year has been, uh, you know, us really uh, hitting, spending a lot of time uh, and, and working very closely with Milford to understand um, uh, th th this, this exhibition that you're going to see. It's, it wasn't, uh, it, 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 somebody didn't put it in a crate and, and, and ship it to us. We really uh, de de developed over many conversations and many visits and many le lengthy um, uh, uh, conversations, uh, you know, how, how this, what this thing could look like and, and what materials uh, were, were out there. Um, what else was in the question? I mean, I guess I would add to that just to say that um, we did think about organizing the exhibition as if you're walking into the house. So, you know, Milford has 
in the late sixties, Milford writes for the for the uh, for this journal called the the Cricket, which is a short lived, sh very short four four issue journal initiated by Leroy Jones slash Amir Baraka, and he writes that you know the black musician is always going to be exploited, never going to make money, never going to be able to uh, see returns from the music in the music industry as it's structured and as like, so at that moment and with the buffer that he gets from, you know, a paycheck from Bennington that lasts some years, he really centers on his house as the focus of, it's not that he doesn't tour, it's not that he doesn't record, it's not that he's not in the world, but like the house is the center of everything because he doesn't need to subject himself to um, the, the fly-by-night natures of uh, the music industry. So the show is structured around the spaces of the house. It's based around the lab, the dojo, him as a performer, and his garden, and then his travels to Japan. Um, that's the second part of the question. So I will go to um, second question. Uh, does Milford talk about the meaning of teaching and mentoring in his process? And if so, what does he say? Do either of you want to take that? Oh, sort of address it. Um, yeah. I mean, he's not a, a like, I don't know that he talks in that way about his pedagogy. But he does talk more anecdotally about his experiences and a, a way that, um, you know, for him going from South Jamaica, Queens to his students in Middlebury and having to, to you know, formulate a connection. Um, if people are, excuse me, his students at Bennington, if people aren't familiar, Bennington is in southern Vermont. It is, you know, a, a, a more than predominantly white school. Um, and Milford went to Bennington as uh, Bill Dixon, the trumpeter, started the, the Black Arts Department there in the early 70s. And I think with, um, you know, that, that idea of generosity, but that idea for Milford of trying to figure things out. One of the quotes that, that I appreciated that reflects teaching and everything else was just um, anything that feels awkward for you, that's what you should do. And, you know, with, with the teaching piece of it, I think it was this um, energizing component for him, you know, just the, the collective practice, whether he was in a jazz band or whether he was collaborating with Mintanaka in Japan, and other places, um, his Yara students, you know, there was something where in what he was doing, he was learning how to teach, practicing teaching at the same time um, and, and learning from his students. So I think that is, is something that um, informs it. You know, I think, I think his teaching practice, you know, I don't know that you could look at him and in and, and the way of like, does he have teaching models in like John Dewey or Piaget or whoever? Um, I think there was something, you know, generally organic to his practice with with a depth. I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised at all if if he was digging through various educational scholars to look at like how people learn. That that would be. I don't know if, if Mark, you found a trove of that, those kinds of materials at the house. Um, well, to, to, to that, maybe Mark, you could uh, recall the, the library story. Mm. Yeah, well, right before I get to that, I, I will just, you know, continue on that thought a little bit. The, you know, Mil Milford, I think is, is looking uh, at how um, uh, knowledge has been expanded. And, and I think that he is, expanded in, in the ways in which it's compartmentalized and, and, and uh, you know, um, 
uh, how, how walls and barriers allow, you know, certain departments of knowledge to, to interact with others. You know, I think it, whether he is thinking about an acupuncture needle or a delicate herbal mixture or building a sculpture or listening to his, his friend's heart in, in, in the basement or, or drumming on stage, I think he's, it's all the same. It's all the same thing to him. He's it's it there. It's it's expressed differently, but you know he is trying to comp compress uh, uh, all of this knowledge and, and understanding. Um, uh, anyway, what was the question? Well, I was gonna say maybe just mention like the library thing oh, yeah, that he yeah. noticed. Yeah, yeah. like that, that. I think that does speak to him as a teacher, right? Like that does, you know. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, the, all summer long, we've been trying to create a, 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 a Milford bibliography, and, and, and we've done a bit of that. Uh, he has just an amazing um, world of resources uh, that I think just only scratch the surface of, of the books he is, he's read and absorbed. Um, uh, th there, there is this other story about Milford, who is very much a fan of, uh, of Sherlock Holmes, kind of dressing like, like Sherlock Holmes. Uh, so, so, so I think I think that there's something to 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 to, to, to look into there. You know, Mil Milford in, in Queens. You know, he has his free library uh, card, uh, and it's this is before uh, this is before their limitations and 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 and, and taking out material. Uh, he would literally roll up with a uh, with a shopping cart uh, and 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 fill that thing up. Uh, and and I think that he probably uh, spent his entire life filling up shopping carts with, with resources and ideas and, and uh, the, the voices of other experts. Um, and his, by, his mind and body has been able to, 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 to compress all of that information uh, and, and, you know, cr create and, and be a, a healing artist, uh, uh, literally, uh, honestly, uh, th thanks to that, that um, curiosity. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to move along. Um, oh my God, this is a heavy one. Um, but it might have a quick answer. Um, has Milford explored or talked about Sufi ideas of sound and music being the beginning point of creation of matter from the ether to the physical plane? You know what, let me, I will say that we are going to try to get Milford on the Zoom uh, yeah. at least once during this, during this journey. Uh, and man let's let's save that for milford uh i i'm you know uh, i i think i think he's re he's ready to roll with that i mean I, I will just you know to forward that question along i would say like i do think he um he talks a lot about rhythm coming from the micro to the macro so he's mm. he's deeply embedded in I don't know if he would identify it as the Sufis, but that's his, that's his bag. Um, okay. How did Milford become interested in tabla and what was his learning process on the instrument? You got this, Mark. I know you do. Oh my goodness. Um, you can make it quick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, Mil Milford was interested in, in uh, Mastering the tabla, incorporating it into his his arsenal, uh, he he sought out uh, one of the 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 um, uh, most acclaimed and and skilled practitioners of the art form in New York, uh, and studied with with them for um, you know approximately uh, six months, uh, and then uh, was able to to get everything he possibly needed out of that experience, uh, and uh, continued to develop on his own. Uh, and incorporate uh, that that um, th those ideas and, and his own um, uh, com compression of uh, of thought and understanding and and um, the the accomplishments of of the ancestors uh, into his own you know independent and and self reliant um, uh, uh, musical perspective. So I, I wanted to add in that, I'm, I'm not going to get the citation exactly right, but I remember reading that and him talking about the sensation because you play tableau with your, your fingertips 
and just how, you know, there, there was something very sort of corporeal about that, um, that, you know, it, it was like you play it almost like you're replacing acupuncture needles, um, touching the nerves underneath the skin. I mean, I mean, to that as a brief aside, like Milford's not a drummer, he's a percussionist. He scrapes, he knocks, he rubs, he drops, I'm like, you really need to think like a larger lexicon of words to think about what he does to vibrational forces than to just think about striking them with like a, with an instrument, striking them with a, you know, with one, with one point. Um, anyway, uh, we've got a question that says, can we talk more about the process of the creation of the sculptures in the show? Um, we're running out of time. So I'm going to try to make that quick to simply say that, once the documentary of Milford uh, appeared, people became interested in trying to get Milford to be public. And so one of the first people to try to make Milford public was Jenny Jasky at the Artist Artists Institute. And she asked him if she was he was interested in being part of a show and trying to make his ideas of vibration physical. And so he made a sculpt he made his first, I wouldn't say he made his first item. I wouldn't say he made his first visual item. I would not say he made his first instructional item, but he made his first item that was meant to leave the house and speak without him for this uh, exhibition. And it's an object that is in the show that has also been transformed three times since its first showing. Um, at the Artist Institute, and that once that first initial ask happened, he started thinking more about how to make large kinetic physical, for lack of a better term, like representations of different elements of his thought or of his curiosity. And so the, the sculptures are a natural extension of what was happening mentally and internally at the space anyways. And beginning 2017 is when he thinks about them being public without him and being and thinking of objects that that extend beyond him standing next to them um, talking to us. Yeah, the sculptures are very recent uh, in, endeavors, and and they are as most of his 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 creative output uh, teaching tools. Uh, I will say that there is an amazing uh, and captured on 16 millimeter uh, uh, video in the, the, the exhibition that, that shows Milford uh, making some of the, the, this work from just a few years ago and, and talking about it. So you can actually see him in this, uh, and, and this is thanks to Jake McGinsky, this is a new, a new piece um, uh, from, from him. Uh, but you can, see, you, you can see Milford in action uh, you know, working through these uh, uh, these sculptures and 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 talking about them, uh, it's, yeah, pretty cool stuff. Um, all right, we got a question. Um, are there any existing recordings of the percussion Milford provided to the Black um, Arts Movement plays, like Amara Braca's Experimental Death Unit Number no. One? And I'm just got I'm going to start that answer to say like, we will. I mean. Maybe, but like, oh my God, <laughs> like, who the hell? We, we maybe should say that Milford is very protective of his archive. And like, when I say like, there's no recordings anybody knows of, like maybe they're there, but not that anybody knows of, not, yeah. And I think that's pretty definitive. Okay, another question. And it's about visual art, so I'm going to decidedly make you two describe it rather than me. Um, to what degree is Milford interested in visual art among his practice? How does art history provide a reference for him? Is he interested in his work being in conversation with sculpture and art history, or is that not at all relevant to his thinking? I mean, I, I haven't experienced him talking about the like he knows his jazz history with drummers 
percussionists, um, but I haven't really heard him talk about any kind of artistic continuum that he feels part of or working in response to. Um, you know, but, but it, like, so, so it becomes a very interesting thing for me in terms of like how we see resonances with the work or how we see resemblance with the work where um, I don't know what he might be seeing, but, but I think something that I, I hope is evident from our conversations, just when he shows up at the library with an empty shopping cart, that as he develops these curiosities about things, he, he sort of engorges himself. Um, so, you know, it, it really wouldn't surprise me if he's got a, a larger sense of, um, you know, modern and contemporary art just as part of his, part of the things maybe he feels like he should know about, um, you know, if he's going to engage in these different kinds of practices. Um, so, so I'm not, I haven't heard him express it, but I also feel like he's um, somewhat modest about, or, or, or maybe anxious about influence even. Do you have anything to add to that, Mark? Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I think that, I mean, it's exciting that we have this opportunity to present Milford's work uh, in conversation with the, the, the amazing history of the ICA and, and the artists and work that has been presented there. Uh, it, 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 it's a, a special moment. I think that um, it's important for us to, to recognize the, 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 the towering achievements of African Americans uh, and you know that, that permeate this country and reflect the, the, the culture in which we exist. Um, I think that there is no uh, greater invention, um, uh, greater American invention than, than jazz, uh, which is obviously an, an African American invention. Uh, but you know I know we're talking about a sculpture and, and the visual art environment which, which uh, you know, offers a new kind of conversation to, to be had around Milford's work. Um, I, you know, I think it, it, it does go back to, to um, uh, his, the, the way in which he channels information and his own life of research and study in, into his, his creative output. So I think when, you know, he's talked about sculpture as frozen, frozen music but I think that there's also a lot of, of, sculpt, uh, of, the, of the sculptural work and, and this visual arts environment and embrace that he's a, that he's a part of that, um, that is, I think the, the, the creating there is, it, it's informed even by years of, of, of martial arts. Uh, uh, it's informed by acupuncture. It's in, informed by, um, you know, a life on stage and, and in the classroom. Um, so, you know, I don't think he's not thinking about the, the you know, the so-called visual, uh, uh, visual art world, um, but I think that he is not motivated and ha has never been motivated by commercial um, uh, uh, um, uh, opportunities. And, and so he's going to create uh, in the ways that make most sense to him, not that, would be informed or, or or pressure him because of some weird um, demand of the market. That's accurate. And I would also say like, when you off, also talk to Milford, you don't hear a lot of him talking about any particular discipline. You talk, he talks about energies, he talks about forms, he talks about combinations. So like, I could flip that question around and like, I haven't heard him talk a lot about jazz. Mm despite the fact that he's connected to that like he the 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 whatever that definition is like he's always looking to combine he's always looking to make conduits and constellations that bring it all together and he's not really looking to the he's looking to the end he's not looking to any particular discipline or any particular form um we're getting close to like when our, our cutoff here so before i get to like one of uh the last questions I'm going to say like, there will be a poll that pops up for people. Um, so if you feel like answering it, please answer it. I also want to put in a plug that 
Milford's given us very generous um, access to a lot of his personal videotapes. And so if you go to the ICA's website, there will be a rotation every two weeks of different, either one video from one to 10 videos every two weeks that will bring you into different aspects of research, him as a performance um, performer, him as a in context with his peers, him as a botanist, him as a lecturer, him as a martial arts teacher. So like um, we will be uh, announcing like how many and what tapes will be announced as we go. Um, but, and there will be some amazing guest lecturers to introduce some of these ele elements and ideas uh, to be announced. But I do wanna say like there will be a lot of offerings online for those who are not in Philadelphia and even those who are into these personal tapes that will be happening every two weeks as we move forward. Um, and with that, maybe I will get to this last question, which is like a, one of those holy grails of music nerds, um, speaking as one. We have a question like, has Graves spoken to any of you about his time playing with Albert Eiler in the 1960s and how that has contributed to his musical thinking? And I will say for myself that one of the videos we have um, on display in the ICA is a, solo performance from 2017 where he starts singing some Euler melodies as he's playing, which is, I think, remarkable for, he doesn't often allude to melodies when he's performing. And so that speaks to what Euler means to him. But having watched some of these personal videotapes, he does allude to personal duo recordings that he and Euler did often and says, they are so much beyond anything you've heard that was recorded. And I've got sleepless nights over thinking what that might mean. And now I'll let the two of you, I guess, chime in on that question. So I, I had these fantasies as well, just sort of in my involvement in the project and talking to Mark about it, that, that these things will emerge that, that sort of help flesh out the context, but then also, you know, now that we're in the age of, of everything ever produced existing somewhere, um, the, the fantasy that there are, uh, I think somebody asked about um, background music for Amiri Baraka's plays yeah. and um, you know, more uh, from the Institute of Percussive Studies with Rashid Ali or Sonny Murray, the, the sort of great free jazz drummers, or more stuff with Albert Eiler. Um, there's certainly a, a fantasy where these things see the light of day. You know, I, I hope both Milford is tactical and taking care, but also then the opportunity to share these things um, at the right time it emerges. Yeah, I, I really don't want to add to that. I, I, I you know, when I when, when I visit uh, uh, Milford, I don't I don't talk much about um, um, uh, uh, the, the the older stuff. I mean, he is. He, he's moving st at such uh, a, a, a light speed still now that that uh, I'm I'm just uh, open to to the the, the, the current ride. Um, but I, but I think what Blake has has said is is right. I think that um, I, I have gotten more than a whiff uh, of uh, some of the, the the projects that that Milford is uh, you know still keeping in play and and the recordings. Um, uh, many of them are, are quite historic and, and uh, amazing and special and um, uh, uh, very much part of history. Uh, it's, it's very likely that, that some of these things will, will see, see the light of, light of day. That seems a good ending as any. So thank everyone for being here. Please, I hope you can uh, see the exhibition. Please, I mean, thank you for being 
so far away and yet so close with us tonight. And um, let's all just be appreciative that we're in a world where Milford is teaching people and Milford is still with us, still concerned and still together. So, yeah. Here. Come to the show. I'll be honest, I don't know how to end these things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not ended yet? <laughs>